Oh, think- there we are. Great. Hello, we, Ken. We have we've already, thought, we've already <laughs> asked. We've already been discussing this at seven o'clock. We've already um, answered the question, actually. But uh, you're welcome. All oh, right. Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But it was 7.30, right? I'm, I'm not... Uh, seven, I'm afraid, but there we are. <laughs> oh, it was seven! Good Lord! We've got to know, we've got to, we've got to know each other quite well. <laughs> oh, right! Okay. Oh, you should have given me a buzz, but I'm pretty sure I had it down for seven, seven to 8.30. Is that it not... It doesn't right? matter. It's, it's just a different talk. In fact, it's my last talk, so this is quite interesting that, that it, all, it all ends with you. Okay. Okay. So you've have, you, have you got a presentation? Have I got what? Did you want to do a presentation? Well, we can discuss. You know, if you like, the, 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 how I've, I've wasted my life, if you like, on on this subject of Jesus. I mean, we could go through that, or how I came to Jesus. But I mean, I'll be interested in your conclusions. It's a, that's quite a nice way of of, of uh, for me. It's, it would be a bit different, rather than me. You know, you know, make a, a, a delivery of, of a message like a, a, an Old Testament prophet. If you tell me what you've discovered, you know, having talked about it rationally, I guess. Over to Toby there, because he's the most erudite person on, at, at the moment. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, thinking um, I'm thinking David's. Uh, David, well, yes. Oh. What did we conclude, David? <laughs> Well, I concluded that there was pretty good evidence that Jesus has existed, um, although I, I will grant you that there's um, very little written evidence. Um, that would be putting it in a nutshell. Very little written evidence, but good evidence. OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I would sort of go along with that. I think um, there's probably enough um, disinterested uh, evidence that he existed, but um, whether he was the son of God, um, doesn't fit in with my worldview, so. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you would, you, would, you, would it be fair to say that that, that you at least uh, are an, an unbeliever, but you 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 feel that there was some person called Jesus? Oh, well, I think there was a, there was definitely a Jewish rebel. Jewish rebel, right? Okay. Jewish rebel by the name of Jesus. I think that's probably what I, I would currently believe. Currently, mm-hmm. believe. it's a theory, but not a scientific theory. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I rather I rather go with the Alan Watts idea that um, Jesus tries to say in the Bible that we're all sons of God. In fact, it's 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 actually in the Bible. Yeah. Because when they're about to stone him, they go, "Hey, what are you doing?" Well, this is the Monty Python version, obviously. But <laughs> what are you stoning me for? <laughs> Haven't I been quite a, a good uh-huh. bloke? And it's like, well, it's not because you're a bad bloke, mate. It's because you you you're saying you're the son of God. And he says. Isn't it written in your prophecies mm-hmm. that we are all sons of God? Yeah. And yep. and what's more, the 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 um th- th- that you say you are the son of God, that the actual term the was only added in, um, from what I understand in the in the King James version in 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 1605 or whenever that was. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you look at the Greek one, it doesn't have a, a particle. So the Greek just says. You are you because you say you are son of God, not uh, or the, but but essentially. So so I, I, I so I like so what Alan Watts Alan Watts says is like um, Jesus was a bloody brilliant bloke, but but the Christians went and pedestalized it, thereby undermining the so-called good news that he was supposed to bring, which is that hey guys, you're all sons of God, whatever God may mean, because that's again a, another debate. Um, but so I think that I, I go with that one first. Right. OK. I mean, uh, 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 and I presume the, 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 the others, uh, you, you, you have various uh, uh, variations on that. You sort of think there probably was a nice guy or something or other. Yeah. I think, it, uh, I think I'm, I'm is... saying nothing. <laughs> it's saying nothing. Oh, right. OK. Karen? I go. I go with Schweitzer so that he was an apocalyptic prophet. Okay, the the, the Bar Ehrman sort of and <laughs> yes. solution. Karen, yeah. What okay. Your, your, Karen, what did you want to say? You think? Yeah. Um. It's it's just the sort of it's a bit like an onion with with all the with all the layers. There might be Jesus as a good guy in the middle, and mm-hmm. then there's all the things that are added. By all the beliefs and all the stories that go 
around mm -hmm. him. I mean, I'm thinking particularly if you start thinking about Christmas, if you start thinking about the virgin birth, um, you know, does, is that consistent with Jesus? And if that's a lot of nonsense, does that discount the idea of Jesus? Mm, yeah, you're getting dangerously analytical when you, you talk like that. Yeah, it's, it's, you're absolutely right, of course. Absolutely right. I think uh, there was Jesus, and I think um, he was this chap who could talk to people like a psychologist and actually make them get better because it was all in their mind and they would get better. And then mm -hmm. it, he became well known. And later on, Paul, years later, Paul put a spin on him and made him amazing. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the fact that you have all these ideas and they're 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 sort of they're around uh, in, in in profusion variations on you know the, who he really was that they they existed in, in great profusion um but it might help if i say how i came to this you know because uh some people imagine because my website is is called jesus never existed my book is no no less emphatic uh jesus never existed it's like oh he's a hot-headed you know uh, uh, analyst uh, you know, a, 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 a anarchist you know a denier of, of reality because he's so hostile to religion you know that's, that's that's what people often conclude they have a psychological interpretation of me um however let me just say most of my life I thought Jesus existed. I mean, I grew up in, in Britain, in, a, in an English country, I went to a, sort of to, uh, a, a school that had you know, Christian services for sure and all the rest of it. And, you know, uh, to be honest, and to my eternal shame, I also got married in a church. But, you know, so I, I, I wasn't hostile per se to Jesus. And, uh, you know, in a, in a way, uh, being something of a left winger myself, um, I, I was sympathetic to the idea of a Jewish rebel, you know, trying to throw off the imperial Romans, you know. So I was sympathetic to the idea of Jesus, but I never believed in Son of God. I mean, I'd go with uh, uh, with if most of you, if you think that, you know, because I thought, well, God doesn't exist, so let's not get silly about this. He's, there's no Son of God, you might say. Theoretically, we could argue we're all sons of God, but yeah, but. OK, so I, th I, I wasn't hostile to Jesus. And in fact, I wasn't particularly interested in religion. You know, um, when you don't believe, why would you be interested in it? You're only interested in it for its negative effects. You know, you, the negative effects draw you into taking an interest in, in religion. And that's what it, it, it did in a way for me. Um, although I, I, when I started, I, I was, I, my intention was to write a book on the, on the Dark Ages. Um, because I was uh, it, it fascinated by the, the, the you know the collapse of ancient civilization, so you know I, I I came from a situation where thinking well Christianity but probably can be began with Christ. I mean it's all logical, isn't it? Christ Christianity, and so that is the route which many people can go down because it's the default route. You believe what the religion of your host country. I mean, we, if you grow up in, in Britain, you're likely to be a, a Christian um, and you, you don't challenge things that are told to you as a child. We all know the effectiveness of telling someone, you know, when they're very young, well, this is the truth. You know, Jesus was a nice man and you better you know, do what your mummy says. And, 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 and you know, it's a control mechanism. So, OK. But so then I started to do some research into the Dark Ages and, and, and starting to question where we get these ideas from about Jesus. You know, what, what, what do we actually know? You think, at least I thought, I don't know if you thought this, that you could go to some secular source of a history about Jesus. You could, you know, find a reference to, you know, a little potted history that maybe some Roman wrote somewhere or some, some Greek or somebody. Uh, but no, you don't find that. And that starts to you know, raise, raise a question about where, where, does, where do these ideas come from and, are, and can we genuinely believe them? Now, I think we have a, an issue and possibly 
it affects us all, that you, you, you by default will be favourable towards a Jesus idea, right? That's what I've found over the years, uh, talking with humanists and, uh, and uh, atheist groups and secular groups, that, that, that they have a, a generally a positive view of Jesus as a man. And it's rather interesting, one of, the, one of the early investigators of the Jesus story, when we began to, historians began to search for an historical Jesus, never mind the Jesus of faith, they make this distinction, there's a Jesus of faith, we just believe this, but there's an historical Jesus we have to look for. People began to say, and one of the earliest such uh, in, inquiries said, came to this conclusion, people who find Jesus are like those looking down a well and they see a reflection of themselves at the bottom of that well. And, and that is a way you might perceive how people see Jesus. And I've noticed that secularists quite often perceive a secular Jesus. Humanists perceive a humanist Jesus. You know, he's got similar values th to themselves. He's like them, you know, he's like them. But that is no more than their particular variation on the theme that a, a crusading Jesus would see Jesus as a crusader with his shield and, and sword. You know, he, 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 Jesus has, has presented himself in, in many guises, but it's very close to the human spirit that uh, uh, where he comes from and, and, and what he genuinely represents. Now, when you come to the point of find, trying to find a historical evidence, and this is where I started to see red flags, you don't find anything, right? You don't find anything. And that is really disturbing. Okay, turn to the Gospels, yes, you get... The, the, the New Testament version of Jesus. But that, as everyone will tell you, as you would know yourself, is not a, a, a history book per se. It has bits of history in it, but it's it but it but it's it but it's 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 um it's 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 designed to help you believe as the gospel of John says. It's how, to help you believe. So it, it it's a very questionable source and it certainly can't be guarded as, as a, his, a historical source now when you look for historical sources do you find them well i can tell you you don't and i have spent 20 years of my life pursuing jesus of nazareth right and and with each passing year it becomes <laughs> more and more certain that there is no such character and there never was but what we have is layers of accretion of, of information uh that that that, uh, that for some people i suppose gives them comfort they find a, a bolt hole for their particular jesus and they close their their mind around it so you know i i when i've talked to christians it's it's surprising how how little they know about the history of the christian church I mean, you know, they just do not uh, study the, their own history in any detail at all. In fact, it, perhaps I've been unfortunate, but many Christians I've spoken to don't even know their own Gospels. You know, they don't really know them. You know, in the, it, it, it's sufficient to talk about them, but they do have their faith. They do have their faith. So uh, despite all the historical or, or, or rational evidence one might present to them, they, 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 they retreat into this castle of faith. And, and you, know, you, you just can't budge that if they are so determined. The people who are grateful for what I've written and presented to them, and it's really quite uh, extensive what I've written and put on the web, and uh, what most people find now more useful as a resource is, is, is the YouTube videos that I produced. There's over, I think, over 200 videos on the Jesus Never Existed YouTube channel, and they're very popular. Um, some of them are quite short, five, ten minutes. Some of them are up to an hour. But they do provide people a way of gaining information outside this fortress mentality that I've got my faith and I don't want you coming along and disturbing it. Can so, I ask a question? 
Of course. Um, just, just about how historical sources from 2000 years ago work. That, I mean, history per se wasn't really a thing, was it? And, and we were just hearing about Josephus, um, who, which we th thought did um, talk about Jesus. So are you saying Josephus doesn't talk about Jesus or else that he, he's too late to count? Josephus, Josephus, sorry, is Josephus is a very uh, uh, important resource. Yes, he, he, he gives chapter and verse very extensively on the the history of the Jews. I mean, you probably if you've discussed it, if, if you've discussed Josephus, you know that he fought for against the Romans and then went over to the Romans. He, he, he was became part of the entourage of, of Vespasian. He went to live in Rome and he wrote. A history of the wars, and then subsequently he wrote a history of the Jews, right? And of course, his reports on the wars did tend to, you know, give a glowing report of General Vespasian. I mean, that's not too surprising. Um, but um, and and the Jews regarded him as a renegade. I mean, we only have Josephus because the Christians copied him. The Jews didn't copy Josephus; the Christians did. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a very now did Jesus did Josephus know Jesus? Well, I don't think so, because he was born if memory serves me fifty seven or is it eighty seven something like that. I'll have to check it out. But he he wasn't even born when Jesus was supposedly crucified. He wasn't even born, so he didn't know him. So, and. And the, the incredible thing about this reference that's often made to Josephus is how brief it is. I've got a copy of Josephus I can show you. It's quite a thick book. And there's a paragraph in there where he f refers to Jesus, right? Um, but, but he's actually talking about the, 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 the building of an aqueduct in Rome, you know, and he breaks off this dialogue about the building of an aqueduct in Ju uh, Jerusalem. He breaks up, breaks off this uh, uh, discourse to, to say, and there was about this time, there was a, you know, another misfortune for the Jews. Um, and and, uh, and he, 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 in one single paragraph, he says, uh, you know, just about everything that a Christian would want him to say. Uh, and, and then he goes back to talking about the aqueduct. And, Quite rightly, uh, rationalists regard this as an interpolation. It's a Christian interpolation. They, t they translated the whole book. They, they were disheartened to find that Je Josephus didn't give paragraphs or chapters to G Jesus, but they squeezed in between a couple of paragraphs about civil construction work and a, a reference to Jesus being the wonderful man, you know, and... Uh, and, and, and it, it's so glowing, it, 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 it could not have been written by an Orthodox Jew, which Josephus was. Um, so the, the later, the, the more recent interpretation of Josephus is that it's been partially interpreted. In other words, the Christians have, have sort of massaged what he put something there. It wasn't very nice. So they've tidied it up a little bit. But it's only only a, an attempt to. Uh, paste over a, 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 an obvious embarrassment because Josephus didn't spend time talking about Jesus and nor did any other Jewish historian and there were a few around and there were Romans around and, and, and you know like Tacitus and Suetonius they, there were such people around but you know they don't speak about Jesus you know there are questionable references been inserted into into both their works but you know they, they, they are not convincing and i assure you there are volumes of information about that on on the internet so sorry uh, uh, that was a question about josephus yes yes thank you very much very interesting okay um isn't it easier to talk about somebody who's real and alive than somebody they're just making up a story? Ah, ah, yeah, right. Here, now, here's, here you have an issue then. Here you have an issue. Um, how do you get people to believe a complete story about a fictitious character? How do you do that? that that's surely you can only really talk about somebody who did exist. 
Now, that, that, but that would be where the rationale comes from. You know, it, it must have been real because they wouldn't have believed it otherwise. But you've got to understand the nature of, of uh, construction of, 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 of social myths, it's particularly religious myths, particularly religious myths, which have been developed by a, a people decimated by war, which is what happened with the Jews. So that is the context. Now, you don't invent the entire story wholesale. So you have obvious developments taking place. For example, in, in, in the, the first of the Gospels, first constructed, that is, not the first that presented, first of these good gospels was was mark right now mark begins his story with jesus being a man fully grown man who goes to john the baptist now there is no reference in in the in the gospel of mark to uh, the gospel to, to, to the nativity that only comes along later that only comes along later so you could you you could you you, you can see how there is a, that you begin to get sort of mismatches between what is written in an earlier story and later, a later edition. That's why the Gospels never quite tie in with each other. You know, they, because as with the passage of time, the story is developed and ideas that were fashionable at one point in time go out of fashion and other ideas come in. So, you know, that that, that, that is what, what's occurring. Now, so... Do you have to start with a man? Well, what do you say about him in the first instant? What is the first thing you say? Well, it isn't, doesn't necessarily have to be a reference to a real man. And in fact, with Jesus, it isn't particularly because these instances where you, so for example, going for, to the baptism um, uh, and uh, perambulating around the the the, sea of, uh, the, 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 the so-called Sea of Galilee, they're they they're very uh, they're very, merely a device for for imparting other bits of wisdom. They're not convincing evidence of <laughs> any real thing. The one that comes to my mind is is where. Uh, Jesus takes his, his uh, got, uh, James and John and, and Peter up to the top of the mountain, right? And what happens, of course, is, is uh, God speaks, I think, in a cloud, and, and you have the apparition of, of uh, Moses and, and Isaiah, and, you know, and, 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 and Peter is confused. He talks about building them a little tent or something. And so but, but if you take that instance, which sounds really quite bizarre in any way or form, um, you have to say, well, if it wasn't real, what really happened then? Did one day Jesus go up to the top of a mountain for a, a, a nice walk and, and come down again? You see, these stories only work when they've got a theoretical message with them. Are we, that, are we talking, sorry to interrupt, but are we talking about a myth here really it's the development of myths and legends Absolutely. about about somebody but Absolutely. in parallel with that there might be just a regular man a regular joe or jesus in this case mm -hmm. who does exist mm -hmm. he might be a fisherman he might mm -hmm. his, his dad might have been a carpenter not dad yeah uh, not god um but all the historians that might have written then would have kind of ignored him. And he might not have been the Jesus that we're thinking of. But in fact, there might have been a real Jesus in that way. In fact, there might have been several of them. There might have been 50 Jesuses. Uh, but the thing yeah. that's got traction is the myth. Yes, yes, absolutely. You, you win up with a prize there, Karen. That is exactly what happens. If you start off with the idea, well, it was he was a real regular guy and, you know, nothing special. You have an issue of, well, why would you remember him? You know, what is it about him? And was he a carpenter or a son of a carpenter or a fisherman or, or whatever he was? You know, was he that? 
or was he something else? And and is he still Jesus if he was actually I don't know a house painter or you know and and and, and if his his mother wasn't Mary but you know Martha. You know what I'm saying is there would have been and in fact there were thousands of Jesuses. In fact, not actually Jesus, because the J wasn't in use at that time. But Yeshua, there were various Yeshuas, and, and it was a very common Jewish name. For example, if you take the high priests of Jerusalem, four of them in the first century had the name Jesus. Four of them out of 16. Four of them had, you know, that's 25 percent of the high priests were called Jesus. You know, so you it's not the fact that we, a man that yes we can jump to the other side and say there were lots of them there were lots of people called Jews Jesus so which one are then you going to say that's the one we've chosen for to be amplified into Jesus uh, of, of Nazareth son of God you know you'd have to say well hang on he's got to have done something or, or, or they wouldn't notice him right you know, if he does, it's not noticeable at all. So then you have to ask, well, what is it that he did that was noticeable? Well, if, he... if, you, if you go with that, uh, we were talking before you came about the, the way the Ahmadiyya Muslims believe that, um, that Jesus studied in, in India um, in, in his 20s and, and then w w worked in Iran on the way and then got kicked out of Iran. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I guess you, you, you'll know more about this, in fact, because I, I, I was under the impression that the Isa, which is what the Muslims call him, did actually show up as a, as a fairly learned prophet in the Iranian records of the, around the time. But I, I may be wrong, because right, I don't I haven't looked into it as much as you. Well, you, you, you're right and wrong. I mean, yes, this name Isa exists in, 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 in Arabic, and, and yes, there are so many stories about Jesus. This is the thing. The story has been carted off in every d direction. I mean, there's even a, a tradition about Jesus going to Japan. Now, can you imagine somebody from, from the Middle East in the first set getting, you know, but, you know, he's, 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 he's up in, in, in the mountains in India. He's, he's, there's, there's thoughts of him even in Glastonbury, you know, this guy has been moved around and made sort of special, but where is the reality of it all? Yes, there might have been people with that name. There might have, some of them might have been fishermen. Some of them might have been carpenters. Probably a lot of them had the, a mother called Mary, another, the most common Jewish female name. And, and so you think, okay, we've got loads and loads of Jesus, possibly, are we saying that, well, only one of them was the real son of God, but but he didn't get noticed by anything at the time. And then you start thinking, that sounds more like a myth, a, a myth that's being created and, and, and it has been amplified generation by generation and then taken off by cultures in different directions. You know, we know, you know I've seen pictures of, of, of a, a, a black Jesus from Zimbabwe. You know, the, 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 the Jesus is, 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 is melded into whatever people want him to be. Uh, that's the point. And you have to say, well, where did it all begin? Did it actually begin with a man? Why would it need to begin with a man? It, you know, it, it, you, you're talking of somebody comes to earth as the son of God. I mean, that's really the, 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 the God decides to praise himself in, in historical time in, 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 in the guise of Jesus. But he doesn't hang around very long and he, he disappears again. Now, do you actually need a man to plant that idea on somebody? Because what's that going to happen? You're going to start off as as you probably did, as I did. People, when you're a child, tell you the story. You, you learn the story before you start looking at any history. You learn the story. You know, you know the story by heart. And, and so where, where can we get any, any credibility for a real Jesus? You know, because every single story you, you, you look at, you know, take one that I'm particularly fond of, you know, the, the one that comes nearest to a reality the overturning of the temple. You remember the, the, the story of overturning of the temple? And you think, hmm, OK, let's go with that one. Jesus does it single handedly by the biblical account. Right. 
the temple, if you don't already know, at that time was hu a huge structure of, of, of covering 35 acres of, in central Jerusalem, right? The temple court, where the money changes were, was a, as an actual official part of the Jewish temple structure. People had to use an acceptable coinage their, con contribu their, their contribution to the temple and their payment for animals had to be made in a certain coinage. So they had to, had to have it changed over. So they, they, these were legitimate businesses. And yet, supposedly, Jesus, with a handmade whip, he manages to go in there, he drives out the animals, and he overturns all the, all the, the, the tables, and he walks away. And as the gospel tells you, from that point on, the priest planned to kill him. Right? Now, do you think, given the, the thousands of people that would be milling around the temple, the hundreds of money changes, the temple guards, somebody could have just gone in there with his whip and started turning things over and he would escape with his life? I mean, he didn't even get arrested. You know, it's it's just. But it's I, don't, I, I don't think we're really. I think most of us here will probably buy into the basic premise that you're making, which is that a lot of the the stories are um, not in any particular way historical. But I think I think that the point that I still find, I think. Yes, they, it, they, they, he is probably an archetype, but I, I agree with whoever said it earlier that I I, it's almost easier to believe that he was based on some kind of historical figure that, than, than that he was entirely conjured out of thin air. Although I know, I know from there's a, there's a, there's a theory at the moment that that Muhammad also was was created years later um, to fit with, uh, with 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 the um, thing. So I mean, I I I. I I don't know. Maybe it just well, it, okay, it's so very hard to prove a negative. That's the problem. Yeah, well, that is the point. And what we come down to, of course, is uh, probability, probability. You know, uh, at the end of the day, a lot of historians who write about this historical Jesus, they come to the conclusion uh, it probably existed. It's, it's a nice little you know, comment you can get away with. You're not upsetting anybody, you know, because if you hit the nail on the head like I do, <laughs> he never existed, uh, people will be hostile. They will. They will. Because it's easy, like you said, it's easier to believe that there was somebody than, than, than actually the, the horror story of realising it's all a fabrication. But, but that doesn't mean it wasn't all a fabrication. It's just that we have difficulty taking that on board, that for oh, 2,000 years we've all been taken to the cleaners and often nations have been just destroyed and bodies have been heaped up in mountains because of this 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 bogus idea but then as, as you just said it, it it's almost probably so that Muhammad was 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 an invention uh, you know it makes much more convincing evidence when you start looking at Muhammad and thinking this doesn't sound like it really originated down in Mecca you know it really sounds like it came from the, the areas nearer to the you know the, the central areas of of the Middle East, like Damascus and and Jerusalem, and it sounds like it was much later than this Muhammad guy. But they created him because he was the guy that they could present as the front for their their religion. So yes, I I don't have any problem saying to people, yeah, that, that, that these are all fraudulent ideas. I don't think there's any chance of a god coming to Earth. And I don't think anyone really seriously met somebody and they were so convinced that he had miracle powers uh, that, they, that, that that's what they believed. They started to believe little bits of a story and then each new generation, they added other bits to that. Oh, actually what I wanted to say as well, that um, I read a long time ago that the name Jesus of Nazareth, that Nazareth, didn't actually exist until the third century AD. So, you know, that, that was another thing that that name was sort of made up. And when, when I was studying uh, history a long time ago and my lecturer, um, she was 
she was amazed. I mean, she would completely agree with you because she was amazed that historians are so good at looking at their primary sources and analysing it. And I said, why are they not asking any questions about Jesus, about his existence at all? And what you say, a lot of them accept it because they think, well, so what, you know, that people believe what they want to believe. But they did not really an analyse any primary sources at all, so it seems. Well, they're so good at doing all the other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, the, the, again, that is a cardinal point. Yeah, a cardinal point that that it, it, you know historians don't particularly want to write about Jesus. They have, there's no particular mileage in it because you know you you think of the hostility you'd get from the southern states in America, right? You know, I, I was invited over there to do a tour at one time, but we, 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 it, it, it seemed a, a, a little bit of a, a, a risk a risk that I wasn't prepared to take. Um, because you know they take they, they there you've got believers who will you know if they could shoot uh, uh, doctors in abortion clinics they could certainly shoot somebody who's saying their religion is hogwash, and uh, but but uh, what what do we do if we are secularists and humanists and we're we create, committed to 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 rationality? Um, you know, you you can't compromise uh, uh, on such issues because your your uh, your opponents are so hostile. And, and, and they are, because, of course, religion is tied in with their, their well, they, they think they're going to heaven, they think they're going to be with their loved ones. They don't want people to point out it doesn't fit together. It's made up of holes and, they you know, there's no real, you know, it, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, 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 a heavy lift. It's a heavy lift. <laughs> So, Any more questions? <laughs> Sorry. Did you start to say something, Karen? Yeah, I was just thinking that the people who are, you know, the died in the wool evangelists, and they believe that all this has happened, but all this is is based on faith. It's, it's not sort of real. Mm -hmm. And if if there must be some people in that population who believe that they've actually seen Jesus or Jesus came into the room or the, the second coming actually happens. And that hasn't happened. There's been no proof of that ever having happened. But no, nobody sort of examines that at all. Nobody expects it to happen. And yet they're, they're so... Uh, they believe in it so fervently and I can only think that it is just that it's a kind of castle of faith really and rationality is just not allowed in but you would think that they would like to say I saw Jesus in my kitchen he said oh yes I remember God and you know that sort of thing and it, it just it just kind of won't happen but You'd think somebody's expecting the second coming. They're talking about the second coming, but if it actually happened, would anybody believe it? Even of the evangelistic mm. zealots. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I've I've come across Christians who who, 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 who who quite happily smile at me and say, "Ah, oh, yeah, but I, I I I you know Jesus cured my husband's cancer." You know, I prayed to him and, and, and he got better. You know, okay, the hospitals might have played a little bit of a role in it, but it's Jesus who gets the credit, you know, and, and it strengthens their faith. It does, it strengthens their faith. Uh, you, you, you can point out that, well, you know, why are the 12 disciples so unknown? You know, and it, well, that, you know, I, oh, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. I, I've got Jesus, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because, Everybody knows what Jesus looks like. Isn't that marvellous? The entire world knows what Jesus looked like. He's sort of slightly above average height, slim guy, long hair, long length hair, you know. And, and we all know that, you know. And you think, well, how do we know that? How do we? The, the, the Gospels don't give any description of Jesus. None at all. None at all. You know? yeah, do, you, do you really think, do you, I mean, do you really think that... I mean, I, I know there are people who actually believe in like a physical God and a, 
and and a Jesus with, that looks like the the, the sort of <laughs> the the TV Jesus, um, and that that Mary looks like she came out of Lords in in a, in a blue shepherd like a French peasant's dress and all that. But I, you see, I, I think I think people. I think the, the problem is that as non-religious people we tend to assume that religious people have the most idiotic ideas um but i think the, you know if, if let's look at chemistry i'm a i was a chemistry teacher you know mm. you might at one day go like if if you if you still had an o-level idea of chemistry and then you you suddenly were able to see that water isn't like a big white ball with two red balls attached and it's not that at all You'll, and anyone that knows any advanced physics uh, chemistry would be like well of course it bloody isn't that's the sort of that's the thing to get you started and, and i can't help thinking that that we sort of non-theists create a, a ridiculous archetype of of, of, a, of a god which is so ludicrously crap that any any religious person that actually believes it yes well you know it's the sort of redneck level one religion but anyone that's advance in any kind of spiritual <laughs> form of religion and it doesn't matter which religion it is you know has long since gone beyond the idea of god as being in in three dimensions and having a, like a bodily form or any of that nonsense and i just i think that we waste our time i i mean to me like if jesus didn't exist okay that's interesting but i don't really see how if i was a a Christian of, of more than level one, that it would make the slightest bit of difference to my faith in Jesus, which is entirely, presumably abstract, once one gets beyond the, the, the simple book religion. Well, that's how I would imagine it. I don't know. The trouble is, <laughs> not having been brought up without a religious background, it's I'm having to imagine what people feel. So I might be giving them more credit than they deserve. It, it, well, oh, sorry. sorry. It just reminds me of that that rather not particularly funny joke about a man in uh, from the city in his car uh, gets lost in the countryside and he pulls up uh, by a gate and there's a farmer there and he says to the farmer how do I get into the city from here and the farmer says well I wouldn't start from here <laughs> and and that's the sort of way I feel about this the way that um this, all these conversations are are hijacked by a sort of um, not going back to first principle, which is um, <laughs> yeah, God is entirely man made, and everything comes after is man made, and therefore, why are we having these conversations? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm 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 with you in many ways on what you've said there. Um, firstly, about this, you know, we have red legs. I, I talk a lot to rednecks, but nearly all of them are in the States, right? Um, the, the, I find in, in the UK, there's, there's a, well, a, a, a rather satisfying disregard of religion. You know, people don't really waste their time on it. And I actually have struggled at times to find a Christian to debate with me. Because even if I find someone who claims to be a Christian, they, they don't know the gospel or, or the church history well enough to debate. Well, that's, because, that's because the Church of England is basically based on the idea of doubt. Well, yes, exactly, exactly. And, and yes, I, when I've discussed with, 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 with occasionally with churchmen, I mean, you'd be amazed how much they disagree with the, 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 the biblical story. You know, you can, you can discuss it in England, whereas I've just spent a month in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And um, I tried to broach the subject a couple of times and it was like... <clears throat> end of conversation yeah it, it oh, religion or um, were you talking about islam we're trying to get them to talk about islam yeah but i, I spent a lot of time in texas um for well, okay yeah but, i mean yeah. The, only, the only time i get any discussion is when i meet a mormon because yeah. they immediately try to want to convert me in which case i go okay yeah yeah i agree no. and, and, oh, i'd say the same for jehovah's witnesses i mean most people yeah. shut the door and but i invite them in i invite them in <laughs> yeah, we have long discussions. Yeah, the, and and and, that, and that's that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but, but of course, they have to retreat into faith in the end and say, "Well, you just don't believe it, do you? You just don't believe it." But you know, and and then they come back to some, you know, uh, experience that they've had. You know, it's usually people have had, you know. Well, they would describe what are they a, a, a sort of a, a second coming? As as do you? They've been touched by 
by a religious experience. So they're born again. They're born again. You see, and 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 you you and I've tried. I've tried. with now these are sometimes intelligent people. I've tried to get them to explain it, but they almost won't explain it. They just mm. won't explain it. It's sort of personal to them. It's sort of like, yeah, I, well, it was at night and I was alone, but I, you know, I can't go into it. It was, you know, and and, and, and you're down to you know a battle against woo, aren't you? You just, you just well, all this I, <laughs> spooky stuff. I, I am, as Andrew knows, I, I've started um, doing school as a school speaker for the Humanist Society. Um, and one of the things I with some of the older children, I say, um, when I was at school for a period of my time, I went to a Quaker boarding school and uh, you all had to have your name and your number sewed into your clothes. And my number was 115. And I'm now 63. And if I'm driving along in the car and I look up, I keep on seeing 115 on door uh, on on a on a, a door or a, on a number plate <laughs> or i was cycling along on my bike and i looked down and it says 115 and there was a period of my life when I, this it happened so much time i thought it's something trying to you know am i about to have a heart attack am, am, am i getting a message here <laughs> and, and then i realized that if my number is 116 i wouldn't notice the bloody thing at all <laughs> yeah and it's because yeah. my number was 115 at a pivotal time in my life when I was 15, 16 years old, I now notice 115 everywhere I go. And for me, that's that's sort of a little bit like religion. Mm. You sort of, you notice things because you want, you have a connection or you want to believe it or, I mean, it's the whole Dawkins thing about wishful thinking. Um, you, yeah. you, you want something to happen, therefore. When I was 16, I was quite quite a questing youth at Quaker school. And um me and my two mates went on very went, went on a, a, a long walk around North York Moors for two weeks, and um, we we hadn't worked out how to eat food properly, and we ran out of food. We ended up stealing turnips from a field of uh, sheep who were eating the turnips and cutting the bite marks out. And we got into York, and um, we went. We were in York York Minster, and I, I was standing at the at the uh, the uh, lectern, a huge gold lectern with an eagle and the Bible. And I was in front of the rose window and um, I was reading the Bible, looking up the rose window and I suddenly started to feel really strange, really weird. And my father, you know, who was religiously uh, inclined for a while, had talked to me about religious experience. And I just thought, oh, my God, this is it. Yes, this, this, is, this is the religious experience. I just stood there and looked at the window and just waited. And then I thought, I'm just fucking hungry. <laughs> <laughs> starving and i went out with my last 10 pence i bought a packet of peanuts and i felt so much better yeah and i think that was the end of my questing yeah well yeah and yet some people would would, would have gone the other way wouldn't they exactly they, 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 i am driven know. by my stomach <laughs> <laughs> there, there was an occasion when when, when i was challenged by uh, uh, a believer to 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 pray right to pray and i said oh come on how can i pray i don't believe it he said i don't, don't matter if you pray you god will you've got to pray you've got to do it out loud right and, you know sit, you know out loud and, and god will answer you right so i thought well in the interests of academic study i will do what he says okay so i you know he gave me the prayer you know and i i said this prayer and and, and, and waited of course i waited and waited and, and 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 eventually i asked him well look i've not heard anything from god like yeah yeah what what what, what was he going to do and and the answer was you will know when he does whatever it is he does you think Okay, so that's your get out. So mm. if I was so minded, <laughs> well, he's going to, uh, you know, trip me up on the pavement or make my grandmother sick or something, you know, but I've got to put in, the, the, feed the, 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 the notion that I'm going to then believe, you know, it's sort of such a self-serving sort of idea that prayers will be answered, but you can't say which way they'll be answered. It's all up to God, isn't it? But don't, don't you think that, again, that is a way in which religious people have misunderstood their own teachings in that prayer, if, if prayer is done properly, prayer is a very powerful thing because prayer is giving thanks. 
And if all you do is give thanks, particularly, you, you know, I don't think there's some God to hear it. But the thing is to give thanks because of the structure of, of, of the English language. We tend to think we give thanks to something. And I, I wouldn't mind betting the first person that came up with this idea of, 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 of a God was like, just be thankful. <laughs> and yeah. someone said, who shall I be thankful to? And it's again, very Monty Python, but just, no, just be, just be thankful. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> and then it's, you sound like an idiot. And so then you make up someone to be thankful for. And, and, but that doesn't negate the idea. And I think pe I, I absolutely will pray for people. I think prayer is good, but I won't say, please help them. I'd be just, it'd be like, I'm thinking of them and I'm thankful for them. And that's it. And the moment prayer goes into asking for something, then, and I think what, what, what Christianity says is you shouldn't test your God. Well, of course not, because he doesn't actually exist. <laughs> it's an idea. They, they were smart but, when they got, came out with that idea. Yeah. But the thing is, it, that isn't like a great discovery. And no. I think anyone that's got deeply into religion realizes no. God doesn't have a physical existence. But just as if you're doing, you can't make a radio if you don't believe in the square root of minus one, because you can't do the maths. The square root of minus one does not exist in the dimensions in which we live. But our faith in the square root of minus one and our, you know, using um, I in, in a mathematical calculation allows us to do advanced mathematics, which allows us to do real things. And I think the faith in a godlike you know, thankfulness and, and be, being able to take a spiritual step is a valuable thing and, and and i kind of going back to the chemical analogy having nonsensical as it is having these very basic level religions as a stepping point to get to a position of um of a more spiritual outlook i think can do you good but yet yeah, you mustn't get stuck in it <laughs> and, you, and so i don't disagree with anything you're saying but i don't also think that anyone that's of any advanced level in a religion would give a shit no, no prayer is also very sorry i was no. just going to say prayers prayer is also useful it has a use even if you think it's nonsense mm. in terms of talking to god it also has a use of putting something almost siding a problem putting it on the back burner yeah saying, well i can't do anything about this issue but i'll just put i'll just put it there and it it stops you worrying about it so i think it's it's very with a lot of people in in that sort of way that um, you know that it's almost as if they're they they're giving the problem to somebody else. Yeah, I, I, I accept. That there's all kinds of psychological uh, advantages in having uh, believing in a religion. There, there there certainly is. I mean, it's been suggested that uh, people who believed in religion were more likely to survive than, 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 than people who didn't. So, you know, early atheists died out and we only had religious believers because, you know, it, it, somehow their God was helping them and they were more positive and more positive people, you know, tended to have more children and so on. So, um, yeah, there, there are, there are I, I think in time, it would be psychologists who understand the entirety of, of, of religious belief and, and, and they will probably identify quite how it happens, happens in, the, in the brain that, 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 that conditions people that way. But I'd start off by saying, yes, and if, you, if the church has ever stopped indoctrinating children, they would find their membership dwindled to almost to negligible levels you know because it, 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 that's that, that's where it belongs and and uh, and all, all the stories are are, are accreted in, 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 over time and, and none of them relate back to a real man um, that, that's my conclusion after 20 odd years of studying it i think it's interesting that um, towards the end of her life uh, mother teresa wrote to her bishop um, and she was having a crisis and she said, you know, I've been praying to God for 40 years religiously and uh, he hasn't said a word. <laughs> I've heard absolutely nothing for him uh, in my entire time of praying. And the bishop wrote back basically saying, see, <laughs> that's how much he loves you. <laughs> uh, which I thought was quite extraordinary. 
Yeah, I've, I've heard various anecdotes about Mother Teresa. She's uh, uh, doesn't doesn't bear too much scrutiny, actually, does she? Yeah. You're to end poverty in India, and mm. and, and, um, and bringing a contraception. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I I I think your point about Ken about um, psychology is very uh, um, interesting, and. Uh, the psychology of belief and of course it's been popularized a bit by say Darren Brown for example I'm sure a lot of people have seen him uh, programs and um, it, it cuts both ways because the psychology of um, belief shows that beliefs are very difficult to change it's uh, much easier to reinforce a belief than it is to change a belief Yes. And so once, uh, as you said, once ch children hear these stories, instead of schools being gently uh, um, introducing children into the real world, uh, breaking them away from their fantasies, uh, in this one respect, um, at least a third of our schools do exactly the opposite. They say, well, there is one fantasy that is actually true and we all believe it and, and so on. So and I think uh, it's... Um, a credit to uh, certainly um, English society that uh, a very few people end up, uh, children end up believing. But of course, there are a few. And that is, as you say, the, the, the Church of England and the Catholic Church depend on the, this in, 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 uh, induction. And of course, from their parents as well, reinforced by their parents. But schools do reinforce it. Uh, so, but, the, but the point is uh, I'm making is that the beliefs are difficult to change and uh, so that's why I've never I've never argued with uh, religious people unless they sort of argue with me uh, it's virtually never happened in my life uh, even though I've been interested in religion uh, so yeah I, I but I do appreciate those people like you who are sort of scholarly and looking into it because it's it's one of the most fascinating aspects of our existence well, it is fascinating, and, 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 and also there's a terrible side to it as well, because, I mean, although we're living in an enlightened age now, for centuries it wasn't so enlightened, and, and religion was a cause of so much suffering, you know, that we... And, and you know, consider child abuse in this current time is, is bad enough. You know, it, it's religion is, 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 is a, 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 you know, a source of many evils in this world, even if you know, they run occasional you know, charities or something. Um, there, is a, there is an issue there, which makes me uh, campaign for it. <laughs> yes. Mm. So uh, have, have we resolved any outstanding issues? <laughs> Well, it's interesting to hear, hear where you came from, uh, Ken. Uh, before we were talking, uh, uh, what, what's your early history? Uh, you know, you, you, you said the last 20 years you've been looking into the uh, veracity of the, uh, the Bible and so on. Uh, but what was your earlier history? Because, and what sort of, what do you think uh, drove you to, um, to this? Well, uh, it was it was curiosity, really, and, 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 and uh, his, historical interest. Um, as I say, I, 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 I had an interest, uh, an uh, career in the computer industry and, and uh, teaching, and uh, it was only in later life that I decided to look at, at the history of uh, religion and, and uh, Christianity. Um, what, 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 what drove me to it? Um, it, it, it was, the, I mean, there, the, the, the story of, of all that happens in, uh, uh, that has happened in Christianity is truly fascinated. You know, you, you take the early centuries when there were various church councils, for example, that, you know, over the course of three or four hundred years, there were continuous church councils where they were trying to hammer out what they believed. You know, it wasn't a question they believed already. They had to agree what they're going to believe. So there was a series of doctrines came along and they were... Uh, quite acrimonious and violent and, and it's, it's 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 the whole story of humanity really 
the whole story of humanity. And then, of course, it, it's become the pretext for God knows how many wars. You know, you think of the Crusades and the, you know, the, the invasion of the Middle East by, by, by the Pope's legions. I mean, you know, it's it, it's it's rolled on, you know, and it still does. I mean, you know, with. We've only just emerged. I hope we've just emerged from ISIS. ISIS is a threat to the world with its uh, another sort of barbarous uh, interpretation of, of, of you know what they think is reality. I mean, I, I think we we all. I mean, I suppose we're comfortable in Britain because we can just think well, nobody's too bothered by it. But it it it, it globally, it's still an issue, isn't it? It's still an issue and. Um, yeah, so I, I I I really got stuck into it, and and, uh, um, and, uh, and then of course from from first of all writing a book, then writing the the web page, because then of course the internet came along, and then of course uh, people wanted uh, shorter books. There's a, there's a shorter book I, I wrote, you know, so so because this this one was too heavy for most people, so they wanted a shorter book. So I came out with a shorter book, and then they wanted e-books. And, and you know, so I've released a couple of ebooks and so on. But it's 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 difficult. It's di difficult to keep up with the, the evolving technologies. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not going to move. Jesus never existed onto TikTok or anything. You know, it's just it's just not not going there. But you know, um, that's where that's where we're at. Uh, and Ken, were you were you uh, raised in a Christian household? Oh, oh, in terms of that, no, no I was not. Sorry? No, no. Sorry, go on. Go on. No, I, I, I grew up in the East End of London, uh, you know, in the years after the war. Um, and uh, I think if my mother had been asked, she would have said C of E. But it probably meant nothing at all. I never, you know, she never went to church. Um, I remember her once arguing with some nuns who came calling about where well, she didn't believe merged. Mary was a virgin. She wasn't going to have that. So she did. So she, and, and I remember that argument. And I was only a young kid at the time. But yeah, there, there was no particular. My father wasn't interested in religion at all. He was, a, you know, an atheist. So uh, yeah, so it, it, there was no 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 particular pressure. I, I you know there was I, I get, did get annoyed once when I I I, I couldn't attend the the the, the, cat, the scub the Cub Scouts because I wouldn't attend church ceremony. You know they they said if I didn't go on church parade I couldn't be a member of the Scouts. So I said well you know <laughs> you get on without me then. <laughs> <laughs> And then I, I wrote my vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know what's driven me in humanism, but um, I, I, I had a very mild, you know, very ordinary kind of Christian background and, uh, you know, it wasn't forced down my throat or anything. But obviously something drove me to uh, pursue humanism. Um, Anyone else got a, a, a last few questions or comments about the whole issue? Let me leave you with a challenge. If you think there is still a man behind the legend, <laughs> do send me that information, right? <laughs> and I'll track it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks very much, Ken, and uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. It's been really stimulating. And, oh, uh, thank you. I'm sorry I yeah. missed, got the time wrong. That was That's really great. Fun. I mean, it, it's, it's the first. Well, no, I think uh, we had one time when the speaker just didn't turn up at all. Uh, but it was it's been quite interesting because it's been a kind of nice, it's been more of a conversation than a kind of listening to a, a lecture. And I think it's been very, very interesting and enjoyable. Very good. Well, I've enjoyed it, uh, as I always do. Yes. Thank you very much, Ken. Jesus, Jesus is a friend. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good last one. a friend line. in Jesus. <laughs> yes. Thank you well, very much, Ken. And I'd like, you, to, Sam. I'd like to thank it. you, Andrew, for organising all our talks and all these meetings we've had over the years. Oh, I'm sorry you, that yeah. um, yeah. this is your last one. Yeah, well, thank I'll you. be around still, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you've got my email address. I'm on the internet somewhere. I can't. I can't take myself off the internet now. There we are. 
and, um, and we can still meet for a walk. And we can meet up for a walk and things yes, like that. Yes, yes, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Pop, yeah. Pop yeah. And batten down the hatches because I think it's going to get windy on Friday up in Scotland. Oh, Great. Oh. We've been really looking to snow and harsh weather and we've had this <laughs> lovely weather and uh, there we are. Anyway, lovely to see you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.